I was a lonely kid after my dad died when I was in the fifth grade. Truth was, I didn't want any friends, didn't want to play. I just wanted my dad back. Otherwise, life wasn't of interest, didn't seem to have any purpose. So mom, mom decided I needed a pet. As we lived in an apartment, a dog or cat was impossible. So mom hit on the idea of a hamster or a gerbil. But what I ended up with was a rat, a hooded rat. A hooded rat generally has a cream-colored body with a chocolate brown head, hence the hood. A chocolate brown head and the pink albino eyes of your standard issue white lab rat. I named my rat Hoodie. Kind of like Woody. <laughs> yeah, original, I know. Hoodie lived in an old aquarium slash terrarium with a screen of chicken wire mesh covering the open top. But I soon found that Hoodie was an intelligent animal that liked being handled. And soon he, for Hoodie was a male rat, soon he was going everywhere with me, riding in the pocket of my shirt or my jacket, and sometimes even on my shoulder. One day, I was exploring the remains of an abandoned factory when I made one of the worst mistakes in my life. I let Hoodie crawl along the top of a brick half wall. I wasn't worried about him running away, as he always came to me when I called him and put out my hand for him. Bang! Hoodie had been vaporized by a single shot from a twenty-two rifle. In those days, back in the 70s, firearms were pretty common in semi-rural Canada. I looked up to see Dwight, a kid a few grades ahead of me, standing in an open doorway with a smoking gun in his hand. He was laughing at me. I was beyond hysterical, screaming and crying and jumping up and down and trying to pick up what little remained with trembling hands that came away all bloody. I heard Dwight tell his friends, Hey, look at the weird kid. Hey, you, cry baby, baby. Hey, hey, I think, yeah, yeah, he did. He pissed his pants. I ran all the way home, bawling my heart out. Mom called Dwight's father to complain, and he laughed at her. Your kid's strange, he said with a sneer. He should be institutionalized. My boy should be rewarded for killing vermin. Pet rat indeed. Dwight's family went to the same church as we did, arriving in the old man's Chrysler and decked out in their finest clothes, when Mom once again remonstrated with him on the church steps. Dwight's dad said, I'm tired of hearing about your fucking retard kid. Do you even know who the father is? All this while Dwight's mother smirked in the background. We stopped going to church. I had already been a social outcast, and now I was more alone than ever. I was like the protagonist in one of Poe's poems. From childhood's hour, I have not been, as others were, I have not seen, as others saw, I could not bring, my passions from a common spring. I avoided the other kids, and eventually wound up back in the abandoned factory, where Hoodie had been murdered. For indeed, he had been murdered. Dwight knew Hoodie was my pet. When he pulled the trigger, I'd go inside and sit in the darkness and weep. I wept for my dad, for Hoodie. 
I, I called on God to know why he had killed them and why he didn't kill me instead. God never answered. But one day, something did. Something answered. I was crying alone in the dark when between sobs, I heard a faint noise, a, a scraping sound, a and looking up, I found the twilight filled with a thousand eyes, a thousand red eyes. Rats! Rats! I wasn't afraid. Instead, I said, Hello, little friends. They crawled forward to where I could better see them in the half-light, hundreds of them with sleek, dark brown bodies. They lay crouched and regarded me with... with what? I didn't feel any sense of threat, but... but of kinship. And so began a strange friendship, a strange community. When there was no one else around, I would sneak into the old factory and talk with my new little buddies. I would talk to them about what was going down in my crappy life, and they would listen with apparent interest, if not with understanding. I would collect scraps of food for them from garbage cans or stuff around the house and I would gather branches for them to gnaw, to wear down their teeth. But the rest of the time, when I was with the uh, humans, I was a zombie. Mom was at her wit's end, but didn't know what to do. Things began to change, however, when the school librarian, Miss Tanner, saw me daydreaming over a book on rats and mice. You like animals, don't you, she said. Uh, yes, ma'am, I answered politely, hoping she would go away. You'd like to help animals, wouldn't you? Uh, yes, ma'am. Well, if you want to become a veterinarian or someone who works with animals, you're going to have to work harder at your schoolwork especially in science class. And with that, she walked away. I was intrigued in spite of myself. And after a time, I did start to work harder, especially in science class. And after a while, I was too busy excelling and getting straight A's to worry about the other kids who slowly accepted me and started treating me as a friend. But I still continued to drop by the ruined factory to visit my special friends and to bring them food. I would sit in the dark and tell them about what was going on in my life as they gathered around me, some of them even sitting on my lap or on my shoulders. I would tell them, from the bottom of my heart, that I would never forget them. We would have presented a strange and eerie tableau for anyone who happened upon us. Yet, yet the day came when I had grown to be a man, and so had to say goodbye to my rodent companions, probably for the last time. I had, of course, had the misfortune to encounter Dwight from time to time. It wasn't that big a town. At first, he would call me names like retard or weirdo. But as we grew older, this was reduced to a smirk or a snort. He worked for his old man and drove a black Dodge Ram pickup. I heard the shots as I approached the old factory. The Dodge Ram was parked outside. Dwight was in there, and he was murdering my friends, my special friends. I burst in to find him standing over a number of blasted bodies, his twenty-two smoking in his hands. I heard you were hanging around here, screwball, 
I, I heard you talk to him, that you let him crawl all over you, Dwight said, his face twisted in scorn. I took a step towards him, and he leveled the gun at me. Go ahead, screwball. Go ahead. Try and take the gun away from me. I'll blow you to hell and no one will care. Everyone in town knows you're psycho. I stood frozen. I knew if I rushed him, Dwight would pull the trigger and everyone would probably believe him, believe that I attacked him, uh, that I was a psycho who attacked him when he was just destroying vermin. Still, I think I would have rushed him. But at that exact instant, the rats pounced. They seemed to wash over him in a gray-brown furry wave, a wave with teeth and claws. Dwight dropped the rifle and began to bellow. Then he began to scream, the pitch of his shrieks getting higher and higher. Get him off me! Get him off me! Get him off! I ran forward and grabbed Dwight's gun hand and pulled on his trigger finger. Is this your trigger finger? I yelled. Get him off! Is this your trigger finger? Yes! I leaned forward and bit it off. I always did have strong teeth. I bit it off. And then I ate it. When they eventually found Dwight's truck, they also found his skeleton, which had been picked clean, and which was missing the trigger finger of its right hand. As for me, I never did become a veterinarian, but I did become a vegetarian, and I volunteer at my local animal shelter. The moral of the story? Some rats only have two legs. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. My name is Warren, and I write and tell original ghost stories and original horror stories featuring such cryptids as the Night Floaters, Werewolves, and the Black Eyed Children. So again, please consider subscribing. Please help me to reach my goal of 2,500 subs in 2022. Till midnight. Cheers. Pictures used in today's video, courtesy of Pix here, that's PX here, while the music is the heartbreaking, disintegrating, by the wonderfully talented Mayu. Thank you for listening.